Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya colored Gishoth Dinosaur Tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Gishoth an 8 mana 7 6 Dinosaur Avatar with Vigilance, Trample and Haste and whenever Gishoth deals combat damage to a player we can reveal that many cards from the top of our library and put any number of Dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield. So Gishoth rewards us for playing plenty of expensive dinosaurs so we get our mana's worth from Gishoth and there's no shortage of expensive dinosaurs as we'll see in a second. And then we also need a lot of ramp to make sure we can cast Gishoth in a timely fashion. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. At one mana we've got Commune with Dinosaurs which can reveal a land or a dinosaur to put into our hand. Lenore Elves gives us a bit of early acceleration. Then at two mana we've got more ramp with Marauding Raptor giving our creatures a discount. Also a great way to enable Enrage for the one Enrage dinosaur in the deck and also pumps up the Raptor whenever we play a dinosaur that's dealt damage. Altopec Huntmaster gives our dinosaurs a discount and can also tap to give them haste. Drover of the Mighty turns into a 3-3 as long as we control a dinosaur and also so adds one mana of any color. Explorer lets us play an extra land for the turn. Paradise Druid, another mana fixer that we can activate at least once thanks to Hexproof. Thunderherd Migration costs two mana as long as we can reveal a dinosaur from our hand and then can search up any basic land to put on the battlefield tapped. We've got Arcane Signet and Mindstone as more ramp artifacts and we'll get to Shatter Skull Smashing in a minute. Then at three mana we've got more ramp with Beneath the Sands which we can also cycle for two mana to draw a card. Cultivate can search up two lands, one in our hand, one onto the battlefield tapped. Grow from the Ashes can be kicked for two mana, so for five mana total we can search up two lands instead of just one. And then Savage Stomp gives us a nice one mana removal spell as long as we control a dinosaur, putting a plus one plus one counter on it and also letting it fight, so it can also potentially enable Enrage. And then Thrashing Brontodon, an early dinosaur that can also blow up artifacts or enchantments. Then at four mana we've got even more ramp with Vastwood Surge, which can also be kicked for four mana to put two plus one plus one counters on all our creatures, as well as Migration Path, which we can cycle for two mana, otherwise searches up two lands. So that's also the reason why we need plenty of basic lands in the deck to search up with our various green ramp spells. Then we've got Forerunner of the Empire, which lets us put any dinosaur from our library on top of our deck, so it gives us a nice tutor effect. We've got Ribjar Raptor as the only enraged creature in the deck, so lets us draw a card whenever it's dealt damage, and there's plenty of ways for us to enable enrage. And then Shifting Ceratops shines especially against blue decks, thanks to the protection from blue. Then at 5 mana, more ramp with Mirari's Wake, which also synergizes nicely with all those search effects that put extra lands in play, as we essentially get to double our mana, as well as giving our creatures plus one plus one. We've got some powerful dinosaurs with the Regisaur Alpha, which gives all our creatures haste, as well as making a 3-3 dinosaur creature token with Trample. We've got a Raging Swordtooth, which is a 5-5 Trampler dealing 1 damage to each creature when it enters the battlefield, another Enrage Enabler, as well as Quartz with Crasher from Ikoria, a 6-6 Trampler, saying whenever one or more creatures we control with Trample deal combat damage to a player, create an XX Green Dinosaur Beast creature token with Trample where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player, it's also great synergy with Gishoth, and then moving up the curve at 6 mana, a Tally Primal Storm, a 6-6 dinosaur that can provide card advantage when it attacks, Carnage Tyrant, a 7-6 Trample Hexproof that cannot be countered, Rishkar's Expertise, a nice addition from Kaladesh Remastered, letting us draw cards equal to the highest power among creatures we control, and also letting us cast a spell with converted mana cost 5 or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. And then we've got a few nice cycling dinosaurs with Yidaro, which we can cycle for 2 mana, but still an 8-8 Trample Haste that we can potentially find with Gishoth, as well as Titanotherex, which can cycle and put a Trample counter on one of our creatures, otherwise an 11-11 Trampler for 9 mana. And then we've got Rampaging Brontodon, 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven Trampler that gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn for each land we control, so also synergizes with all those search effects. We've got Turn Timber Symbiosis as part of our mana base, which we'll get to in a second. Satalpa Primal Dawn, 8 mana 4 8 with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible, so that's quite a mouthful. And then we've got the Great Henge for a bit of card advantage, works nicely with some of our bigger dinosaurs, giving it a discount. And then Zakama, Primal Calamity, Mama Zakama, the 9 mana 9 9 with Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. And when we cast Zakama from our hand, we get to untap all our lands to maybe start using the various activated abilities to gain life, destroy artifacts or enchantments, or deal 3 damage to a creature. 
and then Galta Primal Hunger, which also gets a nice discount from having creatures in play, a 12-12 Trampler. And then going over the mana base, we mentioned needing a lot of basic lands, so we've got two plains, three mountains, and six forests. Then Castle Garenbrick can give us a one mana discount when casting creature spells, so useful for ramping out Gishoth. And then we've got all the untapped Naya Color dual lands, essentially, with all three pathways from Zendikar Rising, as well as all the shock lands, so we've got Stomping Grounds, Sacred Foundry, and Temple Garden, and all the corresponding check lands, so Rootbound Crag, Clifftop Retreat, and some Petal Grove, and then some three color lands here with Command Tower and Fabled Passage, and then we also have two of the dual faced cards with Turn Timber Symbiosis, which can find one of our creatures, and then Shatter Skull Smashing also gives us a bit of removal, which we authorize don't really have in the deck. So, yeah, that's our Grandpa Gishoth Brawl deck, so let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Muxus Goblin Grandee deck. Don't see those very often. Uh, yeah, our hand's okay. Turn 3 grow, turn 4 Mirari's Wake, sets up turn 5 Gishoth potentially. We'll see what the Goblin deck can muster. They've got a uh, fitting Goblin Sleeve as well, so... We'll see what they can do. Um, probably not gonna need to cast Symbiosis, so we'll just play tapped. Goblin Crater Maker, that's fine. Get a mountain. Next turn, play Wake. Alright, Relic Robbers. Definitely a scary one here. Gives us a token, although if we can find one of our uh, dinosaurs that deals one damage to everything, we can get rid of those tokens eventually. And with Mirari's Wake I can actually give it plus one plus one, so it can start attacking. So I guess now with Wake the one damage no longer gets rid of it. Monorad shouldn't have any ways of destroying my enchantments, so yeah. We get to play Gishoth and Smash. Alright, so we're at 13 essentially. And play Gishoth. Attack. Can look at the top 8 cards and. Those are some nice cards to find. Oh yes. Mama Zakama can gain life, deal damage, can do it all. And then I guess we can even play an elf. Yeah, maybe the safest play is just to gain some life here. Trash Master. Giving goblins plus one plus one, put on to tanks with all, and explodes. Well, that went about as well as it could have. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Scarab God deck, so it's gonna be pretty controlling. Although shifting Ceratops could be a nice one if they don't have black spot removal. Got turn one elf into turn two beneath the sands. So I'll try it. Put on ramps with signets. And we'll ramp with beneath. And then next turn we can hopefully surge. Do I need a second mountain? I think I do. If our opponent keeps up mana for a counter spell, I'll just play Shifting Ceratops. Which cannot be countered. Let's see if they have a board wipe. Chupacabra. Alright, that one's pretty good. 
Although now we can resolve our vast with surge. Could also go signet into grow from the ashes. I think I would still rather just surge. And forest plains is probably okay. Just keep on ramping. And then we want our opponent to be tapped out for Gishoth, so we can be guaranteed to connect. Thought Erasure gonna have a look. Takes Itali. So next turn we could go Signet into a Kicked Growth from the Ashes. And pass it back. Could cycle Edaro, but I'll probably hang on to it now that we've got the mana to cast it. And yeah, we can cast Gishoth, so if they tap out for Scarab God, I don't mind. Opponent hits for two. And it's going to be Discovery for two mana. And they're going to hang on to presumably a counter spell here. Well, let's play Yidara. Got to get those counter spells out of their hand eventually. And Paradise Root. Now we have the mana to potentially Gishoth and Savage Stomp, and they don't know about Savage Stomp yet. So that can potentially catch them off guard. And we might have enough mana to cast a uh, 10 mana Gishoth too. Opponent takes Rishkar's expertise with Duress. Didn't have to think too much about it. But now they know about Savage Stomp. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna cast Gishoth. Thoughtseize takes Savage Stomp, down to two cards in hand for mana. And I'll take it. Yeah, I think I just Gishoth, and then next turn we can just replay it once again. Tails end. Commune finds Zetalpa. And we'll hit for two. Alright, opponent's down to one card in hand. They can play Scarab God, but they won't have the mana to activate it right away. If they kill one of my mana creatures, I won't be able to Gishoth, but we can still Zetalpa. Alright. Liliana can minus four, kill my two mana creatures, but then we still get to place the Talpa, which is indestructible. And they won't be able to minus four again, so should be able to take out Liliana here. Scarab God shows up. And the combination of land plus Hunmaster sets up Gishoth for next turn. Oh, defeat. What a drag. Now they can start activating Scarab God. So that can put a lot of toughness on the board and make it difficult for Gishoth to connect. But Zatalpa can do some damage in the meantime. They can also get back Chupacabra at instant speed with Scarab God, so that can kill Gishoth before we get to attack. So we might just be on the Zatalpa plan. Alright, Bone brings back Hidaru. Still just a 4 4, so we can block it with Zatalpa. 
All right, so I can play Gishoth. It's a seven six, so Pun can double block. But if they lose Scarab God, that's fine by me. And if they lose the two creatures, then we're under less pressure. And maybe next turn I can replay Gishoth once again. Alright, we'll take out Scarab God. And next turn we maybe get to try again. Gishoth is relentless. Scarab God is dead once again. And our opponent's potentially taking lethal next turn. A 30 mana Gishoth. Still worth it. Alright, this time our opponent puts Scarab God back in their hand. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Alenda, the Dusk Rose deck. Our hand's pretty slow, no ramp, so gotta take a mulligan. All right, this is still on the slow end of the spectrum. Hopefully we can find a two or three mana ramp card. But at least we've got the ramp necessary to eventually cast Gishoth. Probably gonna cycle Titanothrex in hopes of finding a three mana accelerant. We'll have to settle for Commune, take Command Tower. And I don't think I want to cycle Path. Just gonna cast it. Doom the center. So this appears to be the Sacrifice variant. Next turn we can play Signet plus Fast with Surge and then should be able to Gishoth the turn after. Hope there's no instant speed removal waiting for us. Swordtooth also looking pretty good, killing all these one toughness creatures. Alright, I guess it's a little too tempting to uh, play Swordtooth here. Get rid of their commander. And we can still Gishoth next turn, so... Hopefully they tap out so we get a clean hit. Alright, Enforcer 1-2 Death Touch can trade for Gishoth. Although, the opponent keeping up two mana is a little suspicious. So how about we Mirari's Wake? And then I'll have six mana left over. Could Rishkar's Expertise. Or I could just play Galta and then next turn do some stuff. Sure. And 
because then I don't want to trade for Enforcer, especially when we have Expertise in hand. Might see a removal spell on Galta end of turn, we don't. Oligarch, and that's fine. Alrighty, well, we've got a lot of mana. How much mana exactly? About 15. So I can play Gishoth and then still Expertise afterwards. And if they kill Galta, we still get to draw 8. But we get to draw 13 instead. And my opponent explodes. That's understandable. Well, nice uh, Sword Tooth here to clear all the One Toughness creatures. And then we had the ramp to cast our expensive dinosaurs onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Siona enchantment deck. Yeah, our hand's pretty good. Mirarius Wake, one of our better cards, especially combined with these various ramp cards. It's gonna be a turn to Florahedron for ramp. Gonna hang on to Migration Path. Also, I suppose we could go grow from the ashes into Mirarius Wake. But uh, more mana can never be a bad thing. Especially if they have an answer for Wake. So that's in training target Siona, so they get to make a token, draw a card. And then I'll say to protect Siona. Alright, next turn, if Mirari's Wake survives, we'll have access to 12 mana. Although Banishing Light's gonna take care of it. Could play for Honor to get Thrashing Brontodon, which could destroy Banishing Lights. Not sure if we can really afford to set that up, since we're under quite a bit of pressure. If I Migration Path for two lands next turn, I could Gishoth and hope that works out. Yeah, it's probably the play. That alt that glitters definitely increase the pressure dramatically. And a Divine Visitation. Nice combo with Siona, which is going to make a 4-4 Angel now. And yeah, we're just dead. Blink and you miss it. But uh, the Vigilance also meant that Gishot would have gotten blocked here. So yeah, pretty key Banishing Light on our Mirari's Wake. Otherwise this game might have looked a bit different. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a niv Mizzet Reborn plus Gigantha, the Wellspring Companion combo. Uh, yeah, my hand's fine. Missing red mana for Huntmaster, but... I've got a nice start with Elves and Explore. So next turn we get to play Regisaur. And to register into Galta could be a pretty nice start. And our opponent explodes. Well, that was a fast one. Next turn, 2 mana Galta, 12-12, trample with haste. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing a Calyx enchantment deck. This hand is lacking ramps, so I think we gotta take Mulligan. This is better. Turn two Drover into Thrashing Brontodon, hit for three. Wouldn't be targeting much of the opponent's stuff, so I don't think Sanctuary is much of a problem.
Dawn of Hope. Brontodon can also blow up one of their enchantments potentially, but let's see. Yeah, I think Brontodon hit for three is probably fine. Sanctum for a bit of ramp. Could see a sweeper next turn, in which case we can still sacrifice Brontodon on the way out. It's gonna be a Felder retreat instead. And we can play Kicked Grow or Carnage Tyrants. Probably Kicked Grow. And then Drover and Brontodon can attack. Get our white mana sorted. And maybe next turn it's time for Gishoth. Conquer's death only as Brontodon as it targets. So I guess we'll uh, get rid of Feldar Retreats. Yeah, sure. And then probably fine to keep smashing in hand. Both go face. And Indestructibles at Talpa is going to be awesome. And my opponent concedes. Sweet. So yeah, Gishoth delivering the beatdowns, but also seeing the importance of having those opening hands with a lot of early acceleration, because keeping a slow hand is a death sentence. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.